Hi everybody, I'm Maya Bialik. There are no rules to being female, and I believe it's very important to build a life that matters. Hey guys, it's Kirby. Welcome back to Pretty Unfiltered. Today's guest does not need an introduction, but I'm gonna give her one anyways. You know her as Amy Farrah Fowler on The Big Bang Theory. If you're like me, you know her as Blossom <laughs> growing up. <laughs> it's Maya Bialik. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. So Maya is here because she has a book coming out called Girling Up. Correct. I had the privilege of reading it and it's awesome. Thank I feel you. like I needed this growing up and actually- I, I did as well, which is kind of why I wrote it. Exactly. <laughs> and I, I'm like, I need this now. Like it's relevant to everything that's happening. <laughs> um, but why did you create this book? Tell the people, you're a neuroscientist. I am. I, I don't just play one on TV. Which is so cool. <laughs> um, I'm trained as a neuroscientist and um, I've actually written kind of about what it's like to play a late bloomer on The Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. um, Amy and Sheldon very famously um, have late coitus yes. in their relationship. Yes. And I have a website called Grack Nation and I wrote an essay about what it was like to portray this intimate act, um, both as a late bloomer and for this character. And I was approached by Jill Santapolo from Penguin and she said, I loved the way you talked about modesty and a notion of boundaries in a relationship and would you be interested in writing more about that? And I said, well, since you're asking, what I'd love to do is write a whole book about the female experience, everything from puberty to dating and being a late bloomer or not, um, and difficult things in life and how we make an impact in the world. And I kind of wrote a, a scientific perspective on growing up, growing Which up as a girl. I think it's so smart because you kind of touched on this, but there are so many books out there for girls growing up. Like here's what puberty is yep. and here's how to navigate dating. Um, and here's like the anatomy of your body. Right. Um, but there's nothing that kind of brings that all together. Like, why do I feel this way when right. I see a boy I like right. or a girl I like or whatever it is. So um, I found the book really fascinating. Thank you. Um, neuroscience. <laughs> You were an actress. Right. What made you actually passionate about neuroscience when it came to, you know, the theater? Yeah, so I was on a TV show from the time I was 14 <laughs> to 19 called Blossom. And I had different tutors for every subject just because I was in junior high and high school. Yep. So I had this woman who was my biology tutor um, during Blossom. And it was her passion for science that made me um, believe that I could be that passionate about science. That's I thought awesome. you could only be that passionate about like fashion or art or literature. Yep. Um, so having a female role model was really helpful to me and she gave me the skill set and the confidence to believe that I could do it. And so when Blossom ended, I went to um, UCLA. I got my degree in neuroscience and I did a minor in Hebrew and Jewish studies because it helped my GPA. Of course. And then I went straight to a PhD program in neuroscience. And that's, that's my life. <laughs> I mean, that's absolutely phenomenal. I, I can't even begin to scratch the surface of what that must be like. But Thank you know, you. as a woman going into this field, you've, and you kind of touch on this in the book, um, you were raising your kids like while going through this program, which I'm like, are you kidding me? What's it like being a woman in that field? So being a woman in the sciences and in particular in academia um, has its own set of challenges. But I think the difficult part is that, you know, with, with the way women develop and the way our culture is, we kind of are in our most fertile years in terms of having babies in the same years that we're in our most fertile academic years. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of women, it's a very difficult decision. And as much as it's hard for men too to decide when to start a family, for women, you really have to kind of think about that. Yeah, and you know, I think Big Bang has done a great job of advocating for women in this field too. It does a really great job of, you know, personifying it. Um, what are you proudest about most when it comes to Big Bang? Well, I think honestly, like since we're kind of talking about STEM stuff, you know, our show depicts two scientists who are female. So the Bernadette character is a microbiologist. Yeah. My character is a, um, a neurobiologist. A yeah. And I think what's really neat is that the Bernadette character wears cute dresses and headbands and like her outfits are generally, you know, cute. And, you know, Melissa wears pretty makeup. And that is also a kind of female scientist. And then Amy is obviously kind of frumpy and like, you know, she mixes, you know, stripes and plaids yeah. or whatever she does. Um, and I think it's important that we show both kinds, you know, of women just on our show. And the fact is I've, I've known guys like all of those guys that we quote stereotype on our show. And I hope that people see that we, you know, we present these characters lovingly. I just, I really love your story because, you know, you were an, or you are an actress, but you were a child <laughs> actress and then you went off to school. Um, and when you, you have talked about this, but when you auditioned for Big Bang, you put on the bottom of your resume, <laughs> like, Neuroscience. Right, and it, then, it was like, under miscellany. Yeah, and like, like languages. Speaks Hebrew, yeah. Yiddish, Spanish, like roller skates, PhD in like, neuroscience. Neuroscience, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so it's the perfect match for you. 
It's been a really good match, but I'd, I'd like to point out that it means that I'm the least talented actor because <laughs> no one else is a scientist and they, they play scientists very well, so. They do, they do a great job. <laughs> Um, for Big Bang, so we have season 11 and 12. Yes. Kai, have we confirmed it? Um, I, I believe that the powers that be have confirmed it. Okay, good, because so, yes. we're really excited about So if you about... like it, there's more. If you don't, there's more to complain about. <laughs> like, <laughs> great. Uh, what are you hoping happens for uh, Amy in the up, upcoming seasons, Amy and Sheldon? You know, I don't. Do you have any? I don't. I mean, it, I kind of view playing this character like I don't mean to sound pretentious. It's like life. But I don't I don't know what's gonna happen and I don't want to know. We find out what happens on next week's script the night before we start rehearsing it. And I never know what the season arc is. You know, we knew that, that Bernadette was gonna get pregnant and obviously at some point the baby would come out. Like we knew that that would happen when yeah, that yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But otherwise, um, you know, our, our writers really get to decide what, what if what they're doing works and what people like. So I love all the stuff I get to do. I love working with Jim Parsons, obviously. Obviously. But I love working with other characters too. Um, you know, I love working with Simon Helberg, who plays mm -hmm. Wallowitz, and we don't get to do that a lot. Um, Kevin Sussman, you yep. know, who's on about half of our season. I mean, just everybody. We have a really good time and it's a deep cast, so you can do a lot of different things. If you had to pick between acting, you have the best of both worlds kind of right now. Thank you. But for acting, neuroscience, being a scientist, what? Um, the lifestyle is very different. Mm -hmm. And I think an anonymous, um, a more anonymous life of academia where I don't have to wear hair and makeup all the time would probably suit my personality better. But I'm very grateful to be working and now I'm kind of in it. Yeah, you're in it to win it. Yeah. All right, I want to finish this up because um, you posted a video, I think it was just a few weeks ago that I found so interesting. It was about religion and science. Oh yeah, for my, my YouTube channel. Yes, <laughs> which we will be linking below. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I found it fascinating and I'm really glad that you did talk about it because mm -hmm. a lot of people do have a disconnect there. Like how are you a part of this organized right. religion, but also you are you know, a scientist based on fact. Right. Um, why did you feel like you needed to make that video? So I started making, I started this YouTube channel because I, I write about a lot of, you know, kind of heavy things for Grok Nation, for my website. Yeah. You know, what I'd like to do is, is not provide the same information that already exists out there. Um, I try to only do videos about things that I feel I can bring a fresh perspective to that will be touching and hopefully educational. Like that's literally how we decide what we make my own write about. So <laughs> for science and religion, I didn't just want to say like, there is a God and I'm sorry if you don't believe it, yeah. you know, because that's not true. Um, for me, I have a faith in the universe and in the principles of science and there is no conflict for me and nor nor do I think there should be mm -hmm. and nor do most people of my religious tradition um, and proclivity feel that way either. Yep. So, you know, a lot of times it's the agnostics and the atheists who get all up in arms and they get more fanatical about being not religious than religious people are about being religious No, sometimes. really, yeah. Um, but, you know, my feeling is if you have faith that the sun's gonna come up tomorrow, we have the exact same faith. We just choose to honor that in different ways. So uh, for your book, Girling Up, uh, tell the people exactly what it's about. I know we touched on like the top level, but. Yeah, um, this is a book that really takes everything about being female um, from puberty to how we even become female all the way through sex and dating, um, how we form relationships with people, how we get through difficult things in life, what are some of the things we can do to combat stress and depression and anxiety. Um, we talk about eating disorders, um, all sorts of relevant things like that. We talk about body image, and the final chapter is about kind of building a life that you want and starting to think about it as early as you want to. Yeah. Um, no one ever presented to me options for literally what people do after high school. Like I knew what my parents did yeah. and what my parents' <laughs> friends did, but I never knew why some people choose to go to trade school or why people join the army or you know things like that. So we really lay out how to build a life that matters. Think about the kind of life you want and talk to people who have a life that you want and, and learn how to work towards that. And that chapter also includes, includes a huge section on volunteering yeah. and why why it's important to have things you're passionate about that make you feel bigger in a very, very big world. Exactly. In a positive way. All right, Mayim, thank you so much for coming on the thank show. Thank you. You're fa fantastic. Guys, go pick up Girling Up, How to Be Strong, Smart, and Spectacular. She's flying on the cover. If that's not going to sell you, I don't know what is. All right, guys, so let me know your favorite part of this interview in the comments section below. Uh, subscribe to Pop Sugar Girls Guide. We have a fresh episode of Pretty Unfiltered every Wednesday. Uh, if you want to see a specific guest, please tweet me or comment in the comment section because we always are taking recommendations and your favorites so uh ma'am we're gonna put everything all of your links youtube twitter Thank all you. that in the uh in the copy but anything else we need to know no i think we're good all right great well then we'll see you next time bye guys